rise, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order. If you all please rise and join with us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is the hearing of visitors, and uh, no one has signed in this evening, so we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the manner in which the school committee deals with items of routine business. Are there any items that school committee members would like removed? Mr. Sullivan. Item C. C. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, I would ask for approval uh, excluding item C. Second. Motion to remain second. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Mr. Sullivan on item C. I would just like to bring this up because this is the uh, fourth year in a row that Jim Mahoney, which happens to be the uh, district manager for the Brockton Walgreens, and he runs his own store on Main Street. It's on South Main Street in Brockton. It, I didn't even realize there's five Bro uh, Walgreens in Brockton. He has, he had to two programs he did. One was if you were walking up, you were buying pencils or pens or rulers for your, for your own kids, you could drop off the same thing in that box and that would be donated as a trend that was donated to me and I dropped it off to the Raymond. He did that at all five stores and he also cleaned his shelves. In other words, he didn't have the room to store the school supplies for a whole year. So he threw that in a box, gave it to me and I brought that to the Raymond School. And I was trying to figure it out. This donation was, was well over $500. I'm not sure how much, because I don't know what he paid for the stuff or anything. But I just wanted to bring it out that Jim Mahoney has donated, and this is his fourth year in a row, and I will keep up this. I have become a good friend of Jim, and I will keep on going, picking up the donations and dropping them off, and uh, Carol always puts them to good use. What she does is, most of the stuff she gives away. She could sell it in the little store she has there, but most of the stuff she gives away to the kids who really need it. And it works out to be a good program. And I just wanted to bring that up. You know, oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I was just going to say, um, you know, each of our school committee meetings, we honor those people in business, those members in our community that support, you know, our students. And as you said, um, the principals are pleased when they're able to, whether it's backpacks, whether it's supplies, to make sure that all our children are prepared for their for their day's work at school. So again, I, I agree with you, Mr. Sullivan. These relationships are important, and we'll continue to recognize them, you know, to our community. Thank you. And so can I have a motion? I'd make a motion to accept. So second. Item C. Second. Motion to be made properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the report of the superintendent of schools. Uh, as we've been doing, I want to start with uh, our student at Brockton High School, uh, Jess Jessica Freeborn, who is here to share with us what's happening at Brockton High this evening. Okay. Jess? Hi. So most recently in Brockton High, um, report cards came out yesterday for students, symbolizing that pretty much that term one is over. Yay! <laughs> Three more to go. Um, later in the week, this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the auditorium at Brockton High, um, DECA is putting on Love Mad. Um, Love Mad is going to be a performance that stands up to bullying um, through the art of dance. Um, this is DECA's way of kicking off Rachel's challenge. Um, and let's see what else. Um, next Tuesday, 286 seniors um, are going to be awarded the Abigail Adams Scholarships. Yeah. And that's pretty much what's happening at Brockton High this week. That's what I was told. 286. Uh, Did I get that Principal right? Walter, is that number higher than usual or right on? The highest. <coughs> Congratulations. Congratulations to our Brockton High students and congratulations to our staff here this evening. And also I know the school committee is aware that I believe Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock in the Fine Arts we have the National Honor Society being inducted. Oh, uh, I know we have uh, a, a, an additional 86, I think it's juniors, being inducted. So again, I invite all of you uh, to come up. I know congratulations to the students, to the parents that have supported them, and to our faculty at Brockton High School. Thank you. And our parents. 
Thank Congratulations, you. Mr. Minicello. <laughs> oh. Jessica, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the next report is uh, a presentation from um, our Office of Learning and Teaching. Uh, Elizabeth Barry and her curriculum team will be presenting tonight. And I know uh, that last week when I was away, the subcommittee, the curriculum subcommittee had a lengthy, I think it was uh, a long night. So you were able to hear everything from uh, Common Core to the park field testing to what's happening in our classrooms as we transition from um, MCAS and our mass curriculum frameworks into the Common Core, which is happening all over our country. Um, when I was in California this past week, I actually sat through a number of their presentations, uh, and I felt we were certainly on track for, for what's happening across the country. Liz? Oh, probably right in the way. Good evening. Um, last Tuesday night, actually in the same location, um, the Office of Learning and Teaching had the opportunity to um, talk to the school committee about um, how we are preparing for Common Core and Park. Um, it was a very lengthy presentation um, that yielded many thoughtful questions, but tonight is really just about the highlights. So we're hoping that you'll learn a little bit more about the Common Core state standards, the rationale and implications for the park assessment, and our, plan our preparation plans K-8. to So the Common Core standards, um, really what's new about them, we've always had standards. Um, these standards are common. They're across the 46 states in Washington, D.C. Um, they, they're allowing us to hold all students to um, high standards. And the standards that, that came about for the Common Core um, were actually the result of a collaboration between higher education, um, education um, K-12, um, business, and um, community leaders alike. Um, they focus on the knowledge, the content, and the skills needed to be ready for college and career. And some specific examples are the communication or speaking and listening standards, reading and writing standards across all disciplines, varied and more rigorous writing requirements, standards for math practices, technology standards, and reasoning and problem solving standards. Um, the expectation with these standards, the expectation level is quite a bit higher, um, and it's really not enough for our students to know the content anymore. They need to be able to speak about it, write about it, and deeply understand it. And also because of the technological advances that occurred because of the birth of the internet, students must be prepared um, to complete in, compete in a global economy. Um, our students need the knowledge and skills required to complete with, compete with other nations, and these standards are giving us that platform to do that. So as we said last week, we have a, we have a very um, sophisticated plan, um, and we've summarized the plan um, for you tonight. Um, our math and English language arts resources were uh, realigned to meet the standards. All of our pacing and assessment calendars K-8 to were revised. Um, new assessments were written and implemented, and teachers participated in many, many hours of cooperative professional development on the new standards, including curriculum and pedagogy. The Common Core State Standards set the expectation for curriculum and instruction and the PARC test, which stands for the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Career, will serve as our assessment measure of the standards. And very quickly, these are the goals of the PARC test. The goal of PARC is to create high quality assessments, to build a pathway to college and career readiness for all students, to support teachers and educators in the classroom, and also to develop 21st century technology-based assessments, and to advance accountability at all levels in school, and to build an assessment that is sustainable and affordable. 
we've included a timeline that talks about the implementation of PARC. As you can see, this year is the year where the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education votes on a transition plan. We actually expect to know very soon um, the details about the transition plan. This spring, um, schools across the state are going to be asked to engage in PARC field testing, and we will have more information on that as well. Next year, you'll see that there's a combination between MCAS and the park assessment, and the year 2015-2016 um, is the year that all students will be um, taking the park assessment, except for grade 10. You know, the emphasis up to this point, quite frankly, has really been on curriculum um, and assessment revisions, as well as professional development for teachers. And we now realize that we need to spend some time really communicating about PARC and Common Core to families in the community. Both Julian Andrade and Heather Ronan have done um, Parents Academy presentations um, that um, talk to parents about how parents can prepare their children for um, Common Core and also what the PARC test will look like like. Um, we are scheduled to also do a segment on the Common Core and its implica implications on cable this month. Thank you to Jocelyn. And um, that is really going to help with our communication plan with the community. Um, a couple of next steps for us, some of the things that we're going to be continuing to talk to the school committee about, is um, a real need to invest in technology. Um, we are going to need to continue our focus on professional development to make sure that teachers are supported in the implementation of Common Core State Standards as well as the PARC test. And we are continuing to look for ways to really just expand our communication efforts for families in the community so that they really understand what's different about these standards and what's different about this assessment. So that's really it, and again, I really just tried to pull out some highlights from the very comprehensive presentation that we gave last week. Does anyone have any questions? I think they're all questions. <laughs> I think so. And we'll continue to, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to make a motion. Oh. Do you have a comment on the motion? No, I Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we hold off on that so Mrs. Joyce can ask her question? Uh, that was a, a very comprehensive and um, excellent presentation because Thank it you. gave us a solid understanding of the Common Core and the assessment that goes with it. So we do appreciate all the time and efforts that you did put into that for us. Um, just a couple of things that did come out that I think is, are important um, for parents to know is that um, that investment in technology we need to make is because it's a web-based assessment. It's not a pen and pencil, a pen and paper, a, pa a pencil and paper assessment. It is something that all of our students have to take within a specified time frame mm -hmm. on the computers. So we, we do have to make that investment in that technology. Um, and also, I know that some parents may have some uh, concerns about if their children are on, are on educational plans. Right now, under MCAS testing, they have accommodations that are in place, and that will continue. When you did, you did assure us that those those um, accommodations would still be available, yes. which I think is very important. And uh, one of the biggest, I think. Um, um, bonuses of this is that when our children go to colleges, one of the challenges they have now is that many of our students are, have to take remedial courses to bring them up to par for college level courses. And one of the goals of the, this assessment and these common core standards is to bring, is for our students to be able to graduate and be able to take the college level school classes, classes right out of high school, correct? Yes. I didn't talk a lot about that. I don't know if yes, you want to. Um, I'm just going to defer this to Heather. I, when we got into this, but Heather actually sits on the National Park Board. Um, and so do you want to just talk about That's a big bonus that, um, for us. So it's, um, yes, yeah, students will be. Dr. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. 
So as opposed to uh, the scores that they receive now, they will have their performance indicators that students will receive um, as a result of the park test. And um, as of right now, which the um, BESE is, is um, still voting on, they are proposing that a level four or a level five performance indicator will deem the student college and career ready, so they will not have to take the ACU placer test, That's placement right. test, yeah. um, that they will, um, the higher ed is recognizing the rigor of the park assessment and um, says that the students are ready to take credit bearing courses. Yeah, that's that's great. That's a big plus. And just one quick question on the um, the timeline, the year 15-16, yeah. all students with the exception of grade 10 will be taking the park assessment. Right. Is there any, um, I know that there was a little, there's, there was a little article in the Globe today uh, about this and the implications of uh, possibly um, or replacing MCAS. At this point, and you may not be able to answer this, will Park at, at the, that year, 15, 16, be given in place of MCAS? Or is there a possibility that our students may be taking both that year? So we actually think that the board voted late this afternoon on the transition plan. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll have more specifics related to the transition plan once okay. we've had a chance to really digest it. Okay, great. So yep. you'll give us an update when you, yeah. when you know. Okay. Yes. Great, thank you. Hi. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I think we all know that this is going to be a um, significant shift in terms of what we're doing and um, I want to make sure that the district is well positioned going forward um, because you know the achievement gap is so important especially when looking at urban districts like Brockton. Um, so I would make a suggestion and that would be that you um, do a self-assessment of the curriculum rollout and you poll the teaching staff and see if they feel comfortable with where they're at and um, if they feel that they need more preparedness or more resources or more input or support from your team to get everyone on par um, because they're the ones that you know know how they feel and whether or not they are well positioned to go forward so um, you may find that um, they feel more comfortable in one discipline rather than all disciplines so um, just a suggestion but I think it would be um, a good way to make sure that we're all on the same page we're all prepared to go forward um, and that way you know you can basically feel comfortable going forward that you know we're ready to go but but you might find that there might need some be, there may need to be some tweaks in certain areas and and if that's the case that's the case we just do what we need to do yeah, one of the things we actually talked about, about an executive team today was a survey for staff on professional development there are you know issues coming up with so many initiatives and mandates coming down you know to our professional staff so maybe that's something we can add in as we start to look at that uh, we actually that? do have one survey that we can share the results with school committee where we specifically looked at um, the implementation of our math plan um, but it was just k5 that we looked no, at it was k8. did you did you so you have information on 6-8? Okay. So that's something that we could share. But I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it's really important for us, and, and we said it at the last presentation, and as we said, we're just really trying to be very brief. But um, the role that teachers play in this is hugely important to us, and it's, it's critical that they feel comfortable with what it is we're asking them to do with our students every day. Um, and so that kind of feedback would be very helpful. Well, where you already have some information on math, Obviously, the logical step would just make sure they feel comfortable about ELA. Right. So. Okay. That's a great idea. <coughs> We're all in this together. And, and again, this this all ties into uh, the organizational plan that you addressed. We addressed it in regards to curriculum, executive director for six to eight. Um, you know some additional staff positions for these very reasons, and uh, we're excited to move forward with that, and we will certainly 
add this in and start to get some feedback. Like I said, our staff is dealing with new educator evaluation, the transition to the Common Core, uh, they're dealing with the park field testing that will happen this year in the district, uh, retail continued training. Um, I congratulate our staff for keeping it all together mm -hmm. and, and continuing to, to move forward with our growth. Well, thank you. It's all coming together at once. So I think, you know, as a school committee member, um, for my own reassurance, I want to make sure that our staff feels that they're confident and that they're well positioned. And if there needs to be some sort of remedial or, you know, tweaks to whatever it is needs to be done to certain areas of curriculum to meet the new standards, you know, we do that. I mean, you know. That's all. Well, we, we certainly agree. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Sullivan, I'd entertain that motion again if you'd like to make it. Yes, the motion was accept the presentation as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and probably seconded. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have our uh, district capacity uh, project report. Uh, I know we've had the district capacity committee before us on a number of times. They last left you conducting once again a survey which you know, tests the pulse of our community, our parents during open houses, during parent academies. Um, I want to thank Jane Faroli and her team uh, for certainly making sure that, that we had the survey out there in a number of forms, uh, Jocelyn Meek. Uh, so tonight we have uh, Kelly Jones and Dr. Kathy Moran to, to update us on the results of the survey. Good evening. Um, as Kathy mentioned, um, we did have a lot of help with the survey and um, actually just a couple of weeks ago, Tom, Kathy and Kim Gibson presented at um, the Mass Education Partnership Conference on this particular topic. So um, we're very happy that they were able to share that and we're here to share some more results with you. Um, as you may remember, this is a collaboration um, among school department, school committee and um, BEA. So we've been working together for almost two years now on uh, this project. And what we decided was obviously that we really need to get some input from the community to see whether or not this was something that they'd be interested in. So what we did was um, we provided a survey. Um, we worked on it for a bit and then um, we did have, a, as you can see at the bottom, we did have quite a bit of help. Um, we wanted to make sure that we got this survey out to as many parents, families, community members and staff members to get input on whether or not they'd be interested in a du an additional dual language program here in the district. Um, the survey was conducted in both on paper and online thanks to the uh, Katie Buckley and the tech department. Um, they were distributed during open houses by parent liaisons. Um, we had Title I breakfast with they were passed out to uh, participants there. The Parent Academy events, they were handed out as well. We also had the staff survey, which was placed online by Jocelyn Meek, and it's been on the BPS website for community members to, to um, respond as well. As you can see at the bottom, we have we had plenty of help, um, and you'll see why. Mm -hmm. The next slide, um, we had a, a terrific response. Um, we had 2,509 total responses. Um, and I'm just going to say this now since the math has begun. I, I want you to <laughs> resist the urge to pull out your calcula calculators and check our math because, um, first of all, on this slide here, you'll see that we had uh, 2,371 responses completed in English. We had 359 that were incomplete. And you'll see as we, <laughs> you go down the list, what we did was we took all of the complete responses and then used those to tally and to um, do some data analysis. Um, but as you can see, 2,509 was a, a very a terrific response for um, across the district from parents, staff members, and community members. Um, also another reason why you don't want to check our math. Um, there are, as you see on this slide, um, people were asked to tell us what their association with the Brockton Public Schools was. And there are people who, who responded who have multiple associations with the district. There may be, um, for example, myself, a parent who is also a staff member. Um, there may be people who, have, who are community members who don't have stu who don't have children in the Brockton Public Schools. So, um, but what you see there is um, the responses that we received in all of the different languages, English, Portuguese, French, Spanish, and then the the totals. Um, 
the next question was basically to determine what grade levels the um, respondents had uh, children in. And you can see that um, we had a good response across the board, but um, K to two, we definitely had a, a much larger response, um, but not followed very far behind with uh, the three to five. But it was, it was good to have a good sampling across the district of people who had children. Um, obviously, some had children in multiple levels, which is why, again, you're, you're, when you calculate these, you're, you're going to see some discrepancies in the math. But there were people who have children in different levels. Um, but we really did get a, a very overwhelming response for this um, the survey. Um, one of the questions was what languages are spoken in the home and again there are people who have who had multiple languages spoken in their homes. Um, we talked a little bit before this meeting with our group in terms of um, just the really the excitement and the diversity that we have here in the city and in the school department but you can see that um, we have so many different languages in fact we couldn't list them all so we listed them at the bottom. Um, which we thought was it was pretty it's pretty phenomenal just to see that but it's nice also to see that um you know, that we do have people from all different backgrounds who responded to this so we have a good sampling of what people whether or not we had interest so so here's the interest um, if a dual language program were available to my child would i enroll in the lottery and i'll turn it over to kelly and, and you can see the overwhelming response was um, yes. <laughs> Across the various language groups represented in Brockton, um, there is extreme interest in having dual language programs. 76.6% um, responded yes or, or maybe. So 76% um, of the total said yes, definitely, or perhaps. And about 10% said no, um, that they would not enroll their child in the lottery. And then we had some that were not applicable. Again, some people um, responded multiple areas. So they might have said maybe and not applicable. So let's say they don't have a child right now, but they may have a child in the future, and so they may do it in the future. So there were multiple responses. Um, per entry on this, on this question. So then we broke it down even further and we asked participants of whether or not they would be interested in dual languages for certain language groups. The first being Spanish and English. And you can see the overwhelming majority. Um, this, was, this was the average response from a, a one being least interested to a five being most interested. And we took the average response of all the language groups. Um, building on the, the strength and the, the reputation of the dual language school over at the George School already, you can see that there was extreme interest among all groups um, for the Spanish and English program. Then we asked them about the Portuguese and English program. And obviously, the, the, those who responded in Portuguese had the highest um, interest for the Portuguese and English program, but still the French and the, and the English respondents um, had a very strong response as well. On a scale of one to five, you're interested in a dual language program for French and English. Um, uh, the French respondents had the higher number in this one, but again, the, the Portuguese and English did also express interest in a dual language program for French. Now, there was an open-ended question of what other language languages or language program would you like the din, uh, district to consider? You can see we had many respondents. I believe there were uh, 19 languages that were rep represented. Um, Chinese was the, f the top uh, response, um, building on the, the, the um, successes of the the Chinese programs at the Davis and the Pluff and at the high school. So 171 responded that they would like the district to consider expanding that program. Surprising to me, um, but not for Mr. Minicello, Italian was number two. Um, we had 52 respondents who were who were interested in Italian, and then we had um, Cape Verdean and and. Haitian Creole as, as things to consider to expanding um, in foreign language classes as well. Also Japanese and Arabic as well as um, eight other languages. In addition to the, um, the multiple choice questions, there were also additional comments that respondents could make. There were obviously quite a few, um, but we've picked out some here that we thought really represented um, some of the responses that we received. Um, 
first of all, there were many that just basically said thank you to the staff of Brockton Public Schools for educating my child. Um, a, a lot of thank yous, which so we really wanted to pass that along because um, it means a lot for parents to stop and take the survey, but then also just to take the time to write thank you to my child's teacher. Um, but we did have other comments, um, obviously, regarding um, the children's futures and how communication is so important. Um, some were talking about the community in which we, li we live and how beneficial learning another language would be. Um, and then also that um, if this was a program here in the district, any, um, any popular language would be good for my child, knowing that that would help their children in the future. Um, we had a parent who or, uh, a responded who stated that uh, his or her child was already in the Spanish two-way program and they loved it. Um, and then additional programs that may be, um, may be of benefit to the district. Um, Again, just the, the responses in terms of the importance of having children learn another language, being diverse, in a diverse community, having bilingual skills. And then um, obviously this breaks down a lot of barriers, so it was, um, it was nice to have parents take the additional time, respondents, parents, staff, and community members to, to write in some comments for us as well. So our next steps with the district capacity project, um, we obviously need to look a little bit more at the data. We have done the, the basic analysis, but we want to dig a little bit deeper and make sure that we truly understand what all the respondents were, um, were requesting from us in terms of a possibility for a, a dual uh, an expansion of the dual language program. Um, the team needs to work to design a, a program model um, to come up with a school structure and then obviously take a look at facility needs. We have already been on a couple of school visits and we obviously will continue to reach out to other districts and other schools that have these types of programs so we can see what, um, what processes they went through in order to create these. Um, and we'd like to meet um, in, with the curriculum subcommittee so that we can give you an update on where we are in terms of um, you know, designing a, a plan for a possible school. We also talked about publishing these results on the BPS webpage since we did have the, the survey linked there and um, continuing to, ne to network with other districts to make sure that, um, that we're doing all of the, the due diligence that we can if we are to continue with this type of a project here in Brockton. That's it. I didn't put a slide to ask any questions, but you're welcome to ask any questions. <laughs> Do anything to assess uh, students and their interest in languages, mm -hmm. or the experience of students in the Next in year. the dual language programs currently? <laughs> um, I know we have a Chinese program, and we have mm -hmm. the, the Spanish English at the George. It'd be interesting to find out mm. how the students are experiencing those programs. Um, either those that have completed them, moved on to other levels, are they still taking that language? Mm -hmm. Has it has it uh, you know piqued their interest in exploring languages beyond? You know, like kids when they leave the George, do they go yeah. to middle school and want to take more Spanish, or do they are they interested in learning a third language now that they've you know those types of things? Um, we have qualitative data about the George School program and their continuance into the high school. We have students who are in the medical interpretation program um, taking the AP Spanish literature. Um, we've had them come back and well and welcome parents who are enrolling kindergartners in the orientation. But we haven't done anything formally, which would be a great a, a great addition level, yeah. Mm -hmm. To know how the students are experiencing those programs, yep. certainly parents have a heavy say, in, especially the youngest students, in the nature of their education, right. but it would be interesting to... to La last year in the, the Boxer Roundup, I think the high school um, newspaper, they actually, one of the former George School uh, students wrote a, a big essay about her experiences at the, in the two-way program, what she's doing now and how she's going to use these language skills in her, in her college career. So. But, but expanding that, that information would be u very useful. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested mm. in hearing about that. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Motion for made properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. this project um, and I would also like to point out uh, the gentleman standing Ray Shirtliff is our DCP facilitator and he's really provided the team with um, so much guidance and um, knowledge in terms of 
design and um, nudges us in the right direction when we need to be nudged. Um, so Ray, I really appreciate, and I know the team appreciates all of the input that, you, that you've provided us. And, and again, with respect to the team and the people in the district, um, they're very talented people. I mean, I've been very impressed by all of them. Um, we really do have great resources here. And um, um, they're so energetic which is great. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just nice to see that they really do live and breathe and are energized about this project um, and have done great work. Um, again, as you noted, the school committee is going to be informed um, and we're going to meet as a curriculum subcommittee. Um, and, and we obviously need to have a full-blown discussion with everyone on the school committee in terms of you know, their thoughts, our capabilities, financial resources, and all that. So um, you know, it, it, it's a process, but everyone will certainly be included in terms of feedback. So. Not only that, with the district capacity project, uh, you mentioned that we actually had a presentation recently, and it included, you know, the reason for the project also is uh, Kim Gibson, president of the BEA, coming together with your representative from the school committee, Mr. Minicello, along with your superintendent. So all of this is moving forward. We have, I think, three members attending a conference. Is it in San Diego soon? And Ray and I were having discussions about the wealth of information they'll receive there, looking at all of the curriculum and the materials and the support you need to to have a program like this successful so that'll happen I believe in February so once again thank you uh, like all of our initiatives and projects it continues to move forward and we'll continue to share information with you it ties in with the facilities as we're having discussion um, so once again you know thank you and uh, we'll report back to you next item on the agenda is items to refer to subcommittee uh, I'd like to bring up two things. Uh, one is when we talk about the park field testing, which is coming very quickly, we'll be ready to share with you at the next school committee meeting, the sites, the manner, the timelines, we'll be in, uh, informing parents uh, all about how this field testing will happen all over uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts this year. One of the things, uh, Dan Vigian has always been, uh, again, one of our administrators at the table, uh, making sure that we're resourced so the kids that are going to be using technology technology will have that technology but um, unusual but Dan came to myself and Deputy Superintendent John Jerome recently and they're always right there with technicians they put a slip in and I know when the computer goes down I panic can't get to the email can't get my documents up and they're right there to take care of not only for your administrative staff but also for your your teaching and learning and teachers but one of the things we did have to look at with all of this coming down purchasing new technology is resourcing his office with uh, additional uh, technicians. So one of the things I would like to bring to a subcommittee, I believe our next one we're scheduling is December 10th, that's our off Tuesday night, is we're looking at, uh, we have a technology a technician uh, retiring, I believe in March, and right now we're looking to replace uh, Chuck and also where we're doing this at this point in the school year. We do have an unfilled position with SPED and a position we don't think with our um, sight impaired students that we're going to need to go forward with. I'd like to be able to talk to you about a technology person. We'd actually get two for the price of one right now at this point in the year and we'd be able to take care of all the uh, technology work happening uh, in the queue. So I'd like to do that, at, uh, bring that up now, but talk about it a little bit more at length at a subcommittee meeting and also um, I just want to bring to your attention on December 17th, it's our second uh, school committee meeting of December, you also have I believe a POPs concert at the high school. Um, did we want to do anything with that meeting? Do we need to change a time or I know this comes up every year at this time. Depending on what's on the agenda, how, how extensive it is, is that, is that concert Two nights, or two is nights. it just one night? It's two nights. It is two nights. I mean, uh, I guess we, when we know what you have for the agenda, we can. Okay, let me take a look at that for the packet this week, and uh, I just wanted to. I know that's been brought up. I just wanted to bring it up see, to see if there were any concerns. I mean, we could. It, is the concert at seven? I believe it's at seven. I mean, if if it's a short agenda, we could we seven. could post the meeting for six o'clock. I mean, we could do with, have the no. meeting if you need to, post it in time, plenty of time as a change to six o'clock if people would like to do that. I mean, you know. 
Okay. Um, and then with respect to your scheduling, um, Tuesday, that Tuesday the 10th. The 10th. Um, you know, I don't know what people's uh, calendars are like. If if a 6.30 or 7 o'clock is good for people. Um, we need to do curriculum and policy too. I think we were going to talk about calendar items with respect to Please. election days. I, I, all of us, I think, hear from our constituents about not feeling comfortable with the elections and the kids and the cars and the strangers going into the schools that day. Um, I've, I've heard it I heard it over and over again. Um, so we need to have that discussion in terms of what our options could be for the following year's calendar. Because um, I think there is a state election. Um, in November of next, next year, year, so. So we'll do policy, uh, we'll do finances, mm -hmm. and was there another one, curriculum? Um, I need to talk to our DCP team and see how soon they'd like okay. to do that. So, I mean, if we need to, we can add something else, and then something, and then something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll talk to the, to the, to the team and see when they want to present to okay. the curriculum subcommittee. Good. I'm all set. So now under new business, approval of the memorandum of agreement with the Brockton Food Service. Does anybody have that? Mrs. Joyce? I'm the chair of that subcommittee. And so we have a, the ratification of the memorandum, memorandum of agreement between the Brockton School Committee and the Brockton Food Service Associates, Local 888 Service Employees International Union. Um, you'd receive the MOA in the uh, packet on Friday, and hopefully you've had a chance to review it. So we would like to recommend favorably to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Brockton School Committee and the Brockton Food Service Associates. Uh, for a three-year period from July 1st, 2013 to June 30th, 2016. So second. second. Any questions on the motion? Motion's been made and probably seconded. All in favor? All opposed? So moved. Um, any other additional items under new business? Anyone have anything? If not, can well, I just thank absolutely. the members? Uh, since negotiations have began, uh, I came on as superintendent. Uh, I'm there when the, you're there usually. And uh, Patty, thank you. Tony, Tim, uh, you know you've really moved, you know these uh, agreements forward. And and again, thank you. I know the time that you have put in on this. Thank you. Thank you. If, if there's anything, if there is nothing else under new business, I'd entertain a motion. Motion made. Probably seconded. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. Thank you.